Every year, as the Chinese New Year draws closer, lion dance instructor James Lau becomes busier. Lau is a second-generation Chinese Indian, born and raised in India's only living Chinatown, a neighborhood also known as Tangra, in the eastern city of Kolkata. Lau's grandfather emigrated from Guangdong Province in China, following the route that India's first Chinese immigrants had taken 200 years ago, getting jobs on British ships headed from Hong Kong to Kolkata, the capital of India under British rule. The Chinese community in Kolkata, first in an area called Tiruti Bazaar and then expanding into today's Chinatown, known as Tangra, grew to exceed 20,000. In the years that followed, many moved overseas, and the next generation among those who stayed began moving to other parts of India for jobs or higher studies. Today, roughly 2,000 remain. Lao's students, once a group entirely Chinese Indian, today entirely unhyphenated Indian. There used to be lot, lots of Chinese, lots of Chinese here in Tangra. During the Chinese New Year, people come from all over. People are migrating. Let's say the person ha,、uh, has three sons, like two goes abroad, so they have family. During the New Year, they come back here. Despite the mass exodus over the years, the Year of the Ox was brought in with much fanfare in Tangra, and thousands attended. Despite the pandemic, Lao's entirely unhyphenated Indian team performed the lion dance. The lion dance is not only meant for for Chinese. Anyone can do. Anyone interested to do the hard work and interested in the art. It was only the、uh, Chinese culture, but now it's uh, uh, more than that. Now it becomes a、uh, international sports. And Lao's team competes in international lion dance contests. Monica Liu, who organizes the Chinese New Year celebrations, comes from a family that pioneered what has gone on to become one of the most popular cuisines in India and in the diaspora, Indo-Chinese. I'm purely Chinese. From my face, from my heart, from my everything, but holding Indian passports. Liu, who founded four of Kolkata's most iconic Indo-Chinese restaurants, comes from the Hakka community, the larger and later community that moved to Tangra, as opposed to the mostly Cantonese community in Tiruti Bazaar. When they started what we now consider authentic Chinese restaurants. Would serve dishes that were really in, in, invented in San Francisco, dishes that were part of the American Chinese menu. They would do American chop suey. They would do sort of fried rice, basic stir fries with soy sauce and not a lot of flavor, not a lot of spice. And then I think sometime around the 60s or the early 70s, when more Indians started going to restaurants, they realized that there was some. More business to be won if they change the recipe slightly, which was the era of chili chicken, which, till I think the 1980s, was probably the most ordered so-called Chinese dish at any restaurant in India. And just like that, Indo-Chinese was born, with chili chicken and Hakka noodles rapidly gaining popularity and ubiquity. The Chinese community was centered in Calcutta, but. They then spread out, usually to open restaurants all over India. And the early Chinese restaurants in Bombay, for instance, the ones I grew up with, were all owned by Calcutta Chinese families who left and started restaurant empires. As many Chinese moved to Mumbai, a new, smaller Chinatown emerged there. But as China and India went to war in 1962, negative sentiment towards the Chinese community, 3,000 of whom were sent to internment camps, prompted many to leave for countries such as Canada and the United States. 
Mumbai's vanished Chinatown, today a vestige of its former self. Quan Tai Shek Chinese Temple, the last standing souvenir. Some moved away in search of economic opportunity. Others in search of dignity, the idea of belonging. My、uh, parents were considered、uh, foreigners born under、uh, British rule in India, and so they held British subject passports. That does not make them UK citizens. They just are British subjects living in a British colony. If you were born after 1947, you could absolutely get Indian citizenship. But my parents did not have that. For example, they would not be able to own any land. And yes, they could live; they have residency permissions. But、uh, they were not able to vote or ever be able to become an Indian citizen. Harold Kwan, whose grandfather emigrated from southern China to Kolkata, and whose grandmother was born in Kolkata, grew up there until the age of twelve. Then his family was one of many to move to North America. I felt, I think, a little bit in between. I didn't feel fully Chinese. I am ethnically Chinese in terms of my、uh, look. However,、um, I didn't really feel that fully culturally. I felt much more so Indian than my parents would,、uh, because I held an Indian passport. There's a lot of power in terms of influencing that that thought process because of that connection. And yes, it's a piece of paper, but that piece of paper can really imply a lot. Kwan grew up right by the older Chinatown, Tereti Bazaar, where even today the breakfast market of his childhood remains a popular destination for locals. He went to a private school closer to the city center, allowing him to assimilate in a way his parents couldn't. On the weekends, he went to Chinese school. But with the community shrinking and demand dwindling, the school shut down. The bigger Chinese school today also defunct. Its empty grounds used for Chinese New Year celebrations. <laughs> Having lived in San Francisco the last few decades, Quan recently took his teenage children to revisit his childhood. Memories of food and people came flooding back. So growing up in Kolkata, I think、um, uh, from a day-to-day basis at home, it would be fairly traditional Chinese food. Not so much Indo-Chinese food because it would be something that we would either have when we go to a restaurant or or takeout. In the last year, as India and China clashed at the borders and the pandemic surged, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi banned nearly 60 Chinese apps in India, including WeChat and TikTok. And other politicians urged boycotting all Chinese products and establishments. Indo-Chinese restaurants came through unscathed. There was such a huge backlash from people who were busy boycotting other Chinese goods that it became very clear that Indians didn't see Indian Chinese food as having anything to do with China. <laughs> 